welcome. This is the TCAP or Ten Ready or whatever you want to call it. Integrated Math 3 practice test. We'll be working on question number two and subpart one, which is of course <sighs> non-calculator. Yay. They teach you to use them and they take them away. Anyway, the question says a sequence is given, 6, 8, 10, 54. Write an expression that can be used to find the sum of the first 12 terms of the sequence. And write your answer in the space provided. You may be thinking, like, what? I don't remember how to do any of this. What am I going to do? Well, let's see what we can figure out without much thought and see if we may, maybe we can use one of the resources that we're given with a test. So the first thing I'm going to think about is what are my types of sequences? I'm giving a sequence. And I'm going to make a statement about this in a second. Um, there's three basic types of sequences. There's ones that have their own special ones. There's ones that are just totally weird. Uh, but really the two big ones are arithmetic and geometric. So geometrics would have a common difference. So I know that 18 minus 6 gives me 12. And I know that 12 and 18 is not going to give me 54. So an arithmetic sequence in this case is probably outside the realm of possibility. Now 6 and 18 I can do if I do 18 divided by 6, it gives me 3. And you don't even have to do 54 divided by 18. You could just do, okay, what's 18 times 3? 4, 2, 54. Perfect. So I know that as I go up, I'm multiplying by 3. That's my common ratio. See how it created a ratio here? It's a fraction, a division. So r is equal to 3. That'll be helpful. I also know it's geometric, so I'm going to make a statement somewhere over here that it's geometric. Now, a sequence is just a set of numbers that follows a pattern, in this case. Um, but a sum requires it to be called something else. The term that you want to use for sum is series. There you go. So now we have a series there. It's not just some random sequence. It goes on for a specific amount of time. The other thing I want to say something about is it asks for the first 12, which means the series doesn't go on forever. Series can go... It, you could actually find a series amount um, in terms of what happens if the series goes on forever, and you're saying eventually the amount that's being added to it or not will be either will terminate or it won't. So... Uh, but this one, they only want 12 terms, which means that there's a finish line to this, so we say it's finite. Why does all that matter? Who cares? You'll care in a second when we go down to the th thing. So pay close attention to the fact that they're looking for a series, uh, they want it to be finite, and it's geometric. All three of those things can get you to the answer, even if you forgot how to do this problem. So I'm going to scroll down to the reference page. The nice thing about the reference page is it actually does have some use. The old one never really went anywhere, but this one does because da -da -da, finite geometric series, all the parts that I need even though you can't read it right now. So instead of remembering it, I'm going to just write it down. That's where I've gotten to in my life. Oop. So now I'm ready to do this amazing thing where I just fill in blanks. I'm really pretty good at that. If I had a strength, I think that would be it. Filling in blanks. Perfect. I scrolled past it. Obviously, scrolling is not a strength. So I have this. I have the parts that I need. A to the... F this is A sub 1. Um, it's not to the first power. That would be superscript, which is up here. Subscript is used as a label. So it's just saying... Uh, a means the value of the term, and the label for A1 means what's the value of the term in the first position. So 6 is that value. So I'm going to put 6 there. The uh, 1 is pretty self-explanatory, I would hope. And I'm actually going to do it with like a 1 instead of an L. Minus the R, where am I going to get that? Oh yeah, I got it already. So we're good there. And then I'm going to make sure that that is raised to the n power. What's n? It's the number of terms in this, in this sequence that we're making into a series. So there it is, 12. Done. The only other part I need is the 1 minus the rate down here. And you might... They probably... Oh, not 
just r. You want the actual r value, sheesh, 1 minus 3. Now from here you have some options. They might accept this. They might want you to do this. Because 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Uh, you could even go as far as uh, you could try doing a reduction there if you wanted to, but really I'd probably just leave it like right here. And that's all you have to do. You really didn't have to know a ton about how to work that equation. What you needed to do is know how to find it. And really that's where the, th the thinking should be. How do I find information and then use it? Well, we can create it based on using the reference page. So don't forget the reference page. It's there for a reason. Even though sometimes in some tests it doesn't seem like it is. Just ignore all that push forward, look for the reference page in case you ever get lost, and you'll find that occasionally it ends up being a pretty good resource.